Welcome back to the channel. I hope you enjoy. She's Home by Pantarium. Chad sat in his car, distraught and crying harder than he ever had. Head on the steering wheel after hearing the news his wife Barb had a sudden brain aneurysm at work. He had just come out of from the hospital and sat in the parking lot for over an hour handling calls from family members and friends. After he had finished the last call, he started his way home, but the one question in his mind kept repeating, how am I going to tell Bobby, his seven-year-old daughter? He wouldn't be able to do it alone. Calling his sister-in-law, Tina, to meet him outside the house, and with no hesitation, she agreed, and shortly after, they met at the corner of Chad's home street. He gets out of the car, leaving it parked around the corner along with Tina's. The two hug, tightly sobbing, taking a few minutes to collect themselves and figure out how they would break the news. The few minutes turned to an hour, which exceeded to two hours. Night has come and Chad starts to build up his composure, readying himself to do the almost impossible task he had ever come across. As he started to walk up the pathway with Tina beside him, hand on his shoulder, they could see Bobby walking around in the house playing with her dog. Chad walks in and Bobby comes running and hugging him tightly, and still unaware of the news of her mother, he smiles hiding his pain as she goes to hug Aunt Tina. Then she goes on to play and Tina whispers in Chad's ear, You sure you can do this? Chad nods his head, holding back tears and wails of grief. Don't really have a choice, she has to know. He whispers back, taking his time while sitting with Tina and the babysitter that sat with Bobby. A silence filled the entire house as Bobby is upstairs brushing her teeth, getting ready for bed. Then suddenly she comes running down the stairs and yelled, Mommy is home from work! Chad chokes on his own water and runs to Bobby. Honey, what are you talking about? She smiles and points at the door. I seen mommy walking up the pathway. She's home. Chad's eyes start to fill with tears of sadness while looking at his daughter. Baby, I got something to tell you. Mommy. Mommy had. Looking down, breaking eye contact with Bobby when suddenly there's a shadow walking by the window. Chad looks to his right and can see a silhouette on the stone porch making its way to the door. His heart skips a beat and his blood runs cold. Tina and the babysitter standing behind them witnessing the same thing, all speechless as Bobby smiles looking towards the door. Honey, that can't be mommy, cause, cause mommy is... The door handle starts to jiggle lightly as Chad gasps, wiping away his tears, seeing the door is locked hands shaking as he stands and turns toward the door, holding his daughter back slightly behind them. Tina and the babysitter watch in horror at what they are witnessing before them. The handle shakes once more, and three slow, heavy knocks start to rumble the door, followed by the door handle shaking once more. Chad slowly makes his way toward the door. Daddy, aren't you going to let her in? Chad quickly presses his back against the door. He carefully peeks over the door's upper window and can see his wife's distinctive dyed blonde hair. Her hair was always needed a touch up because her roots always showed and that distinctive feature was how he was able to know his supposedly deceased wife was the one behind the door. Gasping in his fear as he looks at Tina and the babysitter shaking their heads in fear knowing what Chad is thinking. It can't be her, Chad. Don't do it. Bobby then pushes her dad to the side. Fine, I'll open it. Chad stumbles, shaken from his fear and grief, and is easily pushed by a child. He quickly lunges and picks up Bobby, and yells, No! Holding her as he quickly spins away from the door's direction. I unlocked it! Daddy, look! The door handle turns, and the door is slowly pushed open from the outside, making a creaking, uneasy sound. 
Tina and the babysitter run away to the back of the house as Chad closes his eyes tightly, hearing his daughter laugh in his arms. Hi, Mommy. Chad lets out a whimper, keeping his eyes closed, still holding his daughter, and hears his wife's slow, cold, shaking voice. I'm home, baby. The end. Brother by Pantarium. Janice sits across from her brother in a dark, dim lit room by the window. She looks up at him as she wipes away tears, and he looks on silent as he's always been throughout their entire childhood into adulthood. I don't know why you come now, Frank. You could have come on birthdays, anniversaries, mom and dad's funerals, and where were you? Off doing your own thing as always. I had to take care of everything while you just... Wiping away her tears while her brother looks away, unbothered. I have two kids now. They're really beautiful. Yeah, you were an uncle and didn't even know it. I really wish you could have got to know them. My son reminds me a lot of you, though. He's there for his sister, but still has that kind of smart-ass attitude. Frank looks down and smirks as Janice lights a cigarette and leans back in her chair and lets her next set of tests fall down her f tears fall down her face while looking at her brother. It hasn't been easy lately, but I try. I'm divorced and raising these kids on my own. I'd ask you to help, but I already know what the answer would be, knowing you. That part of you, anyway. You would have liked them, and I'm sure they would have liked to know their uncle. Frank smirks, nodding his head as he looks out the window, seeing the sun just about to rise. Frank, I'm sorry. Sorry I didn't try hard enough, but maybe it wasn't me, and I'm just accepting all the blame just to save yourself from even owning up to your own life's choices. Poor life choices. Frank leans forward crossing his fingers into one another while looking at Janice. I can't do this every time, Frank. One day this has got to stop and you know that. I don't see why you just... don't come back. This is harder on me than it is on you, Frank. I do my best, but maybe... it's me who should be letting you go. Frank smiles a real smile and nods his head while leaning back in his own chair and he watches Janice stand up and extends her hands at Frank while sobbing. I can't come back anymore, Frank, because I'm letting go. You understand, right? I have to move on, and so do you. Janice slowly begins to walk towards the charred black door frame and looks back at her brother sitting in the burned chair. Go home, Frank. We'll see each other again, I promise. Take care. Watching Frank stand up and walk towards the window as the sun begins to rise and the beams of light shine through his translucent body. Frank looks back at his sister one last time as Janice wipes away the last of her tears and watches her brother fade one last time. Goodbye, Frank. Janice slowly closes the door before peeling one last time into the room where her brother died in a deliberate house fire he had set ten years ago. She wonders still as to why he did what he did. Doesn't know the reason or if it was an accident. All Janice knows is that Frank is now at rest after all the years she would come to visit him on his death anniversary and talk to his spirit in the very same spot. She let him go and freed herself from her guilt that was never hers in the first place. The End Tim Hates Us by Pantherium. We lived in this house that our father had bought on a deal that he and my mother couldn't pass up on. It was a three-story house with a full wide basement and a garage the size of half the house. Plenty of room for my sister and the brother to play and also a driveway big enough for my basketball net where I would play with the friends I made in the neighborhood. There were be times they would call my house the killer's house or murder house. I heard all the stories and so did the rest of my family, but we never been into that whole thing since we were all grown as atheists. 
Ghosts and all those kind of things never scared or bothered us. After a year of not seeing or hearing anything happen in that house, what was there to be afraid of? One night, as we all sat down at the living room eating our dinner while watching TV, everything seemed to be pretty normal. We laughed. Horseplay on the couches while our parents sat with their devices in their hands watching us jump on one another, and my father would jump in and toss my younger siblings on the couch. And just by one loud, sudden crash that came from the master bedroom, the laughter stopped just like that. We all looked at each other in silence as my father slowly got up and nudged his head toward me. Grab the bat. As he grabbed an iron fire poker, telling my siblings and mother to stay downstairs while we went to inspect what was happening. As we approached the bottom of the stairs, we heard another crashing sound followed by a loud scream coming from a male's voice. My heart stopped as my father just seemed to, to grow furious, thinking it might have been a robber who climbed the side of the house and crept into the window looking for something to steal. More sounds of things being thrown across the bedroom, hitting the wall along with a grunting and an almost painful gasp. We climbed to the stairs, ready to swing our weapons at any moment at whoever was in our house. When we got to the top of the stairs, my father in front, he looks at me and nods his head while mouthing the words, on three, one, two, three. We charged into the bedroom, expecting to find a burglar, but all we found was smashed picture frames and my mom's collectible antique shelf. We walked around the shattered glass, peeking into the bathroom and behind the curtains, but nothing was found. My dad looks at me and shrugs his shoulders while I poked my bat around the floor, pushing glass aside, and then it happened again. But this time, from the living room where my mother and siblings were. We hear their screaming while the sound of glass smashing is heard throughout the entire house. My dad and I ran down the stairs as quick as we could while at the ready to swing at the intruder, but no one was there to be seen. We find my mother holding the kids huddled into the dining room corner as my dad and I looked to see the TV smashed and the glass coffee table smashed outward like something literally went under the table and smashed it, which was weird. Who was it? Who was in here? My dad asking my mother, who's shaking vigorously with a pale look on her face, not saying a word. Seeing the look of anger on my dad's face was something else. He wanted to catch who was doing this, but I started to think to myself that maybe this person or thing couldn't be caught. I look at my dad and his anger turns to confusion as he turns to look at me. I knew at that moment we both thought the same thought of what was really happening here. I turned to look at my younger brother who was just crying harder than he ever has while my little sister was calm as still waters. I kneel down trying to calm my brother down as I see my sister's hand raise up slowly. I turn to look and see her pointing at the far corner of the living room and I whisper, What? What is it? I stand up, grabbing my bat, and see my dad scratching the back of my his head, looking confused. I see just over his shoulder and look toward the corner between the window and where the TV was, and I gasp. Not a normal gasp, but... Well, it felt like the breath was taken right out of my lungs when I saw it. I nudge my dad's leg with my bat, and he turns toward me. What? What is it? I point my bat toward the corner of the living room. He looks over his shoulder and by then, it was visible to all of us. A tall man standing in the corner of the room, like a shadow, its entire body reached from the floor to nearly the top of the ceiling, giving off a dark shade of shadow. My dad drops the fire poker and quickly grabs my siblings and my mother and pushes them towards the front door, which was just around the corner where they stood. I try to catch my breath as I see this shadow figure swiftly dart across the room and makes a sort of loud sighing sound. My dad grabs me by the shirt and pulls me toward the door, but just as we were about to run outside to safety, this thing lets out a loud exhale of breath and grabs my brother by the wrist. I could see his hand lifting and soft, 
sort of being pulled as I see his feet on the floor being dragged towards the shadow and as he resisted while screaming at the top of his lungs. I quickly use my whole body weight and sort of tackle my brother under his arm as my dad pulls open the door with all his strength and we manage to run outside to the driveway. My brother crying so hard he can't catch his breath while my father and mother holding my siblings trying to comprehend what had just happened. I stood up and looked through the living room window and see this shadow. Tall shadow darting from room to room as it screams and smashes what picture frames that hang on the wall. I turn toward my family as this thing suddenly stops at the window and looks at us. I look back and can barely see it, but the dark shaded outline of it is still visible. My sister steps beside me and holds my hand, still calm as ever, eerily calmer than she should be. She looks up at me with no expression at all and tugs on my hand. Tim hates us. The end. Thanks for taking the time to listen to one of my videos. I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao.